Okay, so let's start our exploration uh, of you know how the cores boot up, and let's again use the QMU software to emulate four cores and see how the code boots up. Now, before we dive into what's on the screen, I just want to uh, set some ground rules as to uh, what this experiment is going to be. Uh, obviously, we are going to boot you know multi-core, and multi-core has this added advantage that you know. Uh, not only do you see single core booting up, you also see you know multiple cores booting up at once. Now the thing that I am going to do uh, is demonstrate the MPIDR register, the use of it. And so we have four cores here. And what I want to do is only have one CPU move forward with the computation. And I want all others to jump to a location and just, you know, spin, kind of uh, loop essentially infinitely at the same memory location. So the zeroth core is here, the one, two, three, uh, they continue to loop. So this is our sim, uh, setup. And so what you'll see is this processor, uh, this core essentially moves forward while the others are stuck, right? And so with this as the background, Let's go ahead and take a look at the code. So what I'm going to do is I have this. Uh, well, okay. Let's let's let me just say this is where our actual code starts, and the program counter wherever it is pointing, we are going to put uh, you know the code generated as a result of all of this right here. Right. So the first instruction that it fetches is this. Now at this point. An important information for you or something that you should be mindful of is when we are reading data we can use the load and store instructions so what that means is when we are fetching content to the GPRs from the memory we can use the load and the store instruction load to fetch it store to send it back to the memory right or go save it in the memory when we are trying to read the system registers, however, we cannot use these instructions, right? So ARM has provided special instructions called MSR and MRS. And what we do is the MRS will read into our normal GPR register the value of a, a system register. And the MSR will kind of uh, right into the system register uh, the value of a uh, GPR. That is how it works. So MRS and MSR are two instructions that you can be mindful of or remember that they are only relevant in terms of system register and the transfer is between GPR and system registers. Right. Okay, so that said, what's happening here is we are reading the MPIDREL1 register into x0 so each cpu now is going to execute like start their execution from here and execute this instruction so each one of them in their x0 register is going to save different number right maybe 0 1 2 3 so on and so forth now what happens is uh, in the next instruction here we are ensuring that we only look at the last two bits right because zero to three so only you know four possible combinations so last two bits is what we want to look at and then we are saying hey you know if you know if you are uh, if this this instruction cbz here is you know um, i think it's conditional branch zero uh, so what it does is it says hey check the x0 register and if it happens to be zero which means if it happens to be executed on the zeroth core have it jump to this label one and the one f here essentially means look for one in the forward direction right and similarly well we don't have an example for um uh, what do you say um we don't have an example for jump backwards but uh, had it been one above this instruction we would have said one b you know go backwards one f means go forward so then what the zero cpu will do 
again right this cpu will do is it is evaluate this instruction and the condition will match and so it will jump to this location here and after that you know the cpu goes on to executing all of these and then jumps to prompt and at this and you know prompt is like the c function in this case part of this repository which we will not bother about uh, but here something interesting is happening right we are saying hey um, like load into the register x0 the value of a symbol uh, stack pointer or stack top and this happens to be like a number that we are loading into x0 this number comes from linker script again you know some black magic that we are doing here as part of this repository but the idea is that a number gets loaded into x0 and this number as you can see x0 we are then moving into stack pointer the sp register and then after that we are calling a c function right. so the idea was everything about here doesn't require a stack but just before jumping to c function we need the stack so the stack is set here and whose stack is set uh, the zeroth core because only the zeroth core has moved on now question then is what happens to the other cores right so the zeroth core here that has moved on in life and jumped to from the c function and you know moves forward from there at this point what happens to the other core so every core has executed these two instructions and go about executing the third one but this evaluates to false right because x0 uh, in this case is set to 1 in this case is set to 2 in this case it's set to 3 so what will happen is uh, in all other course case they will not jump to the label 1 but they will just fall down to executing the b dot instruction right the b dot instruction and the b dot instruction essentially means hey you know branch to the same location and what they'll do is they'll keep spinning uh, at the same location same location meaning whatever address of this instruction happens to be right and that's how you know we have made the zeroth core go forward and other cores are stuck here now this is part the uh, in part the example here um, the kind of repository we have here we only wanted to have one core move forward because we wanted like one cpu to be functional others to be blocked so let me now you know quickly go ahead and show you this example so i do make here everything's already built so i do make debug you know qmu launches as part of this and in another terminal i do make gdp and as soon as I okay, I should get out of the way. So let me get here. <clears throat> okay, so as I go to the GDB here, you will notice that program counter should point to this. Uh, what is it? 40 million, I suppose. 40 with three zeros, four million or 40 million, whatever, right? Four with a lot of zeros. And so the program counter is essentially pointing to that number, right? And again, as I mentioned, program counter just started off with pointing to that number. Cool. So what we see here, the one through four representing different cores. Now zero, one, two, three uh, represented as IDs one, two, three, four, right? but the same idea. Now what I'm going to do is, um, you know, uh, do next. So as you can imagine, uh, you know, the program counter has moved on and we are only so to speak tracking uh, thread uh, thread id one here which is cpu one um, and let me just you know show something else so as i keep on doing ni 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 which is next instruction in assembly uh, i'm commanding gdb to execute one instruction at a time so it's pointing to this location and um, let's just kind of if I do C now, what it will do is it will release, uh, kind of not do next instruction, but it will say, hey, continue to execute. Right. So once I do C and hit enter, all the cores are now, you know, freely running. And if I now press control C, 
uh, the, the execution is kind of you know uh, paused and now what we see is again core zero is essentially uh, you know right here um, it's 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 moved on in life you know pointing to some C code right here but all other cores are like still stuck right and what I'm now going to do is try and switch to different thread thread two. Uh, right and then I, i'm going to do like an ni there and it has also moved on in life and uh, what we see is uh right so the thread two is still kind of you know stuck so that's then like you know a very high level view as to how the cpus boot up and the multi-core boot what i would have uh appreciated and ex expected is that you know um, this different cpus be stuck at different instruction um, the b dot but that i'm somehow not able to demonstrate right now uh, but hopefully uh, you, you take away that you know the cpus would be stuck on b dot while the others uh, while the main core moves forward at least that should be clear from here